Today, we're going to taste test my Star Wars meads that are over a year and almost a half old at this point. Let's get started. All right, so today, you see two of them right here. This is Yoda's green apple mead. Clearly, it's green. This is Darth Vader's raspberry mead. And I have a third one that I'm gonna cut to a tasting that I did previously. I ran out of bottles of it and did a comparison video. Anyways, you'll see the tasting of that one kind of cut into this. These are from my Star Wars mead series. Now, I, I wanted to make meads that were, again, inspired by Star Wars characters. So, um, you can find the original videos, I'll put them in the description, but there's a Yoda green apple mead. I wanted to make it green. Now, I'll tell you that my green process or the way I got to the green coloring is not, quote, natural. Um, it's pretty impossible to get natural green colors. People have tried it. It's really hard. So this used food coloring, sorry, but that's just what happened. And the Darth Vader uh, actually happened a little more naturally for this one. This is a cherry meat, did I say cherry? Raspberry um, mead. And I was able to achieve some of the coloring with some cherry juice and things like that. What's cool about these, and I don't have it set up right now, but when you pour them and you put these little lights in and try to light them up, they look like lightsabers. So that was a fun thing about that video, those videos. The third one that you're gonna see clips of is Mace Windu's Blueberry and Cinnamon Mead. It's purple, of course. And um, again, I'm gonna cut to some things there. That one is the one I've done the most effort or I've changed the most. So let's see what these taste like. I'm gonna open them up. Each one of these is um, the, let's see, the green apple, Yoda's mead is a year and three months old, a year and four months old at this point, and Darth Vader's mead is a year and six months old. So, you can already see the colors. There's, <laughs> the pouring aspect's not gonna be that interesting, but um, nice red, almost burnt orange on Darth Vader's. I do love that clarity. I did <laughs> disturb the leaves a little bit there. I'll give all the ingredients and information about these meads, the recipes and that stuff on there. In fact, I need to get that for myself. All right, here's uh, Yoda's. Nice green. We're disturbing all the leaves at the bottom of this one. I mean, dang though, I am, I gotta get a picture of this. It just looks so good. Dang. Okay, I have information on each one. Darth Vader's was 2.5 pounds of clover honey, um, two pounds of raspberries, three cups of cherry juice that was added to help with color and maybe a little bit of flavoring. Um, starting gravity 1.090, after primary 1.000. We stabilized it, back sweetened with three ounces of buckwheat honey to keep the dark thing, dark. Darth Vader side going and then bottled it. Final gravity 1.010. A little bit of sweetness in this one, but not a ton. And Yoda's was three pounds of clover honey, two grams of mangrove jacks, just a generic yeast, honestly. Um, 2.5 pounds of Granny Smith apples, which again, trying to go with green, those were not going to give me a green coloring it just was a fruit that is green i should say and starting gravity 1.084 after the primary 1.000 stabilized added half a pound of tupelo honey which is a interesting kind of honey and then we bottled it final gravity 1.012 um, the mace windu which i'll go and give your the information about that one 2.5 pounds of clover honey, um, three pounds of blueberries, basically just put into the, the second or primary rather, one gallon of water, one cinnamon stick, quarter teaspoon of wine tannin, and then back sweetened with Tupelo honey on that one. Uh, I have some major changes to that one that I will not totally say in this video because I have another video flushing them all out. But these right here, I'll start with Darth Vader's since it's the oldest. 
Oh yeah, it's definitely dark. Get a little bit of that buckwheat, um, wheatiness kind of darkness. This is like very fragrant brew. And dang, it just looks so good. Golly. I like the nose, maybe a smidge of booziness, but it's also just, I don't know, let's try it. Ooh, the, the body on it's very thick. Not quite jammy. Yeah. Okay, so there's a tartness coming from the raspberry, obviously. Raspberries are generally tart. The cherry is providing a little bit of tartness, but also a little bit of medium tart. I'm gonna I'm gonna go like top layer is like sweet, not tart at all. Medium tart is like dipping your toes there, and then bottom of the barrel would be super tart. The raspberry is the bottom of the barrel. Uh, tart side, black cherries in the middle, and then there's a layer and uh, a nice layer of sweetness coming from the honey. It is buckwheat honey, so it does have a very bold characteristic, horse blankety, not quite um, off-putting. I mean, that sounds off-putting. Ah, that's pretty dang good. It's very smooth. You don't get a lot of booziness on the on it at all. I'm I'm a big fan of this. Part of my goal today is to talk about the changes I would make to hopefully make these better and to start workshopping these to make them better. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But so far, I'm a pretty big fan of this. I do like that the raspberry is not overwhelming. The tartness is calm. <laughs> it's not so tart that it's like puckering and, and almost sour tasting. That little bit of sweetness helps, but it does still, even with a tart character, have this darkness to it. And a lot of that comes from, I think, the cherry juice and the uh, buckwheat honey. The clover honey is sweet. The reason I did not back sweeten with clover honey is because it's too bright floral and I wanted dark floral. I do wonder with a smidge of oak added, if the tannin profile would be a little bit more enjoyable. It is very juicy, but it doesn't have a lot of cling. It's, it's like thick, but it doesn't have cling, which is kind of interesting. It's pretty good though. What would I change on it? I honestly, I might get a little more raspberry character, add some more raspberries. I like the cherry juice addition. I do like the buckwheat honey addition as well. It wasn't enough to like dominate the flavor profile. I kind of, I think I'd just add some oak and maybe like a half pound or a pound more of raspberries. The yeast choice was fine. I think it worked well. Uh, you could switch and use something like a QA23 or K K1V1 might work well for that. I don't know. I, there, there are a lot of yeast possibilities. Switching over to Yoda's. Ooh, yeah. The, the honey I used has a very characteristic, um, I used the same honey on both of these. It's very characteristic. Kind of just, uh, bright, bright warm in that kind of mix between honey, just clover honey. I mean, clover honey is not like distinct in my opinion. Uh, this doesn't have a lot of uh, apple, has a little apple character, a little bit of malic acid, which is a main acid in apples going, but not a ton. Just, it's very deep. Uh, Granny Smith apples are gen uh, generally sour. Here we go. Ooh, also, same body, same profile in that it's like juicy, jam, not quite jammy, but uh, kind of viscous, but it doesn't cling. It doesn't have a, like any sharpness to it. Tannin are like little bitty things that like when they go in your mouth, they like, if, if it's tannic, it will stick to the sides of your mouth. They literally just kind of hold onto the sides. And if it doesn't have a lot of tannin, then there's nothing holding onto the sides. It just kind of washes right down. Not a lot of green apple character. I get a little bit, of, little bit of it way back on the palate towards the end. I don't know. I feel like I need, this needs way more apples, like probably twice the amount of apples. I do not believe I use pectic enzyme on those apples to help them extract more flavor. That would be helpful. Freezing them, of course, doing that thing um, could be helpful. 
It's missing apple character. The honey character is very pleasant. The two below honey we used, which has a kind of candy-like character to it, is apparent. You get a bright sugary note that's not normal of honey. It has a more candy-like sugar to it. Sugary taste, I should say. It is mellow and smooth. It's very good. But knowing what it is, knowing it's a green apple mead, my brain goes, okay, you need more um, tartness or you need more apple character. Not extremely prominent here, which is a bit disappointing. So if I were fixing this one, I would actually fix it two ways. I would add more green apples and I'd probably double my ratio. Uh, I do like the use of clover honey. I don't know if I would go with Tupelo again. Tupelo just is a weird kind of honey. It's very nice, but I don't know that it matched this. So I would keep with like a wildflower clover for back sweetening. And I would honestly maybe hit it with a smidge more of malic acid or citric acid, which is both acids are um, brighter kind of. Citric is way more bright than malic. Adding a little acid would help this balance a little better. And like I said, on this oak, I need some oak. So now let me go ahead and, and jump over to the Mace Windu. Uh, again, this is a little bit of a choppy clip because it's from another video. So here's my thought and side for Mace Windu recipe. Mm, yeah, so mine is like a, a cinnamon on the, like a more cinnamony on the nose, like pretty dark, not a bright berry smell at all, which I would consider blueberry and not a bright aroma or flavor. It does have a significant amount of like other spices it feels like, um, but it doesn't have that. I think it's just like maybe earthiness from the blueberry and cinnamon mixing in to give me a different smell. I wish I remember what kind of honey I used. I feel like whatever varietal of honey he used complements those flavors really well. Mine's got a little more of a, a brightness to it that is bringing out more um, tart blueberry and the cinnamon. It's a it's got a, there's more acidity here. I mean, I'm trying to find another word for it, but acidity, it does have some sweetness to balance it. The cinnamon is way calmer in this, and, and mine has some of that warmth, but it is so overshadowed by bright blueberry, which I do think could be completely attributed to the blueberries that I used. If I used an underripe blueberry, if I used some, um, I don't think I used anything for acid blend in this. So I think it's just an underripe blueberry. I'm getting more of those acidic uh, tastes and less of the warming side that I want. So after the that tasting, um, that was actually in comparison with another person who made my Mace Windu recipe and he made it better than me. And I, I'm not gonna say that my recipe was perfect because it wasn't and he showed me that for sure. So I kind of took what he, said in his version, which again, I'm not gonna spoil all my secrets just yet, but I've decided I wanna change a couple things. So for that recipe, I learned that a yeast change would be appropriate. The Lauvin BM 4x4 is a great one um, for that recipe. Pectic enzyme and a cold maceration with your blueberries would is going to extract more blueberry character and flavor. The cinnamon stick was good and then um, I mean, those were the two main things. There are some additional things you can do to make that recipe better, but I generally would have changed those things. I did not use pectic enzyme. I did not cold macerate my blueberries, so I did not get the most out of them. I think the same could be said, same thing could be said for these, the raspberries here, the green apple there. Pectic enzyme is literally meant to break down fruit cell walls and help them, um, extract more flavor. So it doesn't matter if it's just blueberries. Use pectic enzyme pre-fermentation to help get more fruit flavor out. You'll get more bang for your buck. Instead of having to buy a ton of fruit, you'll you'll get more bang for your buck. That's just kind of, kind of how it works. So this has been the tasting, um, trying to fix said meads. I have already, I feel confident in the Mace Windu one. I've made it again a couple times now, and it is literally one of the best recipes I've ever made in my life. It's so stinking good. 
I will be sharing that one in its complete entirety soon. I have a video idea for it. These two are going to also be workshopped and I think repeated, and I'm gonna try and fix them to be their best. Obviously every recipe is catered to you or to me, whatever way you wanna think about it. So as you adjust things, as you make things, um, change things how you want, how you need, but be willing to make changes because that is where the real progress will go and will come for you. So thank you for watching. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. I don't know when this video is going out, but we are still on the long road to 50K subscribers. And uh, I hope we'll get there eventually. I appreciate your time. I've had a lot of fun and I'll see you next time. Cheers.